it expensive to rent around here? No. So here is um, I, so this is like five hundred, maybe six hundred dollars a month. Ooh. Yeah, I got a deal. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, and then with insurance and internet, it's like eight hundred. You know. Yeah. I got a deal. Hello, and welcome to Jason Cabinets Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinets. Yesterday is Yura Lee. Yura, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate it. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me. So you're kind of easy question first. Were you a stand-up comedian? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, back in the deep for that one. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um I I don't call myself a stand-up comedian because I don't do it often, but I did take a workshop once. And I did have a five minute set, which I think I freaking killed. So that was at the that was at the Laugh Comedy something, right? Yeah, that was at the Laughs uh, Theater in uh, University District. Yeah, and I mainly did it because um, I had a terrible experience back in two thousand and eighteen. Um, I was at a Costco. And I was walking in and I saw this woman and me and her were just like about to cross each other. And she looks me in the eye. She's staring me down the whole time. And I give her like a little like, what's up? You know, what's up? And she didn't. She just ignored me. She just kept staring at me. As we get closer and closer, she lunges at me, puts her hands around my throat and just chokes me out for probably like, I want to say like 10, 15 seconds. And I was so shocked. I've never had anything like this happen to me. And when she finally let go, she starts yelling these racial slurs at me, just like, I hate Asian people. You guys are the ugliest creatures on earth. I fucking hate you. Go back to your country. And this is a black woman. Uh -huh. And I was stunned. I had scratches on my neck and I didn't know what the hell to do. And what city was this? This was in D.C. Okay. So uh, I ended up taking her... Or I didn't take her to court. This was actually classified as like a hate crime. So it was the U.S. versus this person. And right after that happened, the pandemic started. So like I didn't get to go to court for like three years. Finally, when I got to court, um, she won or like she didn't get charged. And the reason was because uh, she said or she didn't say she she acted like she couldn't speak English. And I think she was Haitian or something. She acted like she couldn't speak English. And so the jury thought that how can this person say those racial slurs if she doesn't know English? And I was like, You're that right. is like the number one rule in the immigrant book. Like I'm, I'm a daughter of immigrants. I know the fucking rule. If you get pulled over by a cop, like just pretend like you don't know English. And she used that rule against me. And so I lost and I found it super traumatic. And I was like, you know what? I'm like still not over this. I want to like express it somehow. I want to get my story out. And so I turned the story into a comedic bit. And then I went up on stage and told the fucking story. And do the comedy was in DC also or somewhere else? No, it was here in Seattle. Yeah, okay. I don't know have I don't know how the last comedy here. Yeah, they do. Uh-huh. Okay. Have you done any any comedy since then? Any stand up since then? I a few uh, a few months ago, I just got a call out of the blue, and it was um, someone who said that they needed someone for an improv spot like right away that night. And so I was like, oh, uh, I was so scared to do it because I've never done improv before. But I'm kind of on this new kick. I recently got out of a relationship that lasted eight years, and so. After that, I was like, I'm going to fucking say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. So I said yes. And I went up and did this uh, improv show where this famous clown from L.A. comes up and basically roasts people. And so I just got roasted on stage. <laughs> and it was like the funnest thing ever. And I was like, I don't know what the hell I signed up for, but I loved it. Nice, nice. So I have a friend, uh, Leanne Linsky. She has a startup called Plausible. Mm -hmm. And what it is, like com comedians go in there online and they do comedy and people pay for them. I'll send you the links. You can check it out. Maybe something you're interested in doing. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I want to get into it more, but I feel like I, I am like a go-getter, but I'm also kind of lazy. So like, 
I'm always, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always like hiding between like, I want to be super successful and rich, but I also want like a zaddy to take care of me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like my, that's my dilemma all the time. So from the comedy, was it like, was it nerve wracking for you or just like, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you're, you're like kind of extroverted. So yeah, I'm pretty sure you're pretty good at public speaking, but was it, it doing it was kind of nerve wracking or? Oh yeah. I was so nervous when, before I got up there, but um, I feel like what makes good comedy good is that when you get up there and you just, you're, you're yourself. So I had to just keep reminding myself, like people are here to see you and who you are and just if you mess up or if you stumble, like just go with it and people are going to love that. So that's, um, I just went up there and did my fucking thing and I crushed it. I was better than everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that attitude. So next, tell me about the tattoo of this lady on your arm. Oh, this tattoo. Um, this is, it, it's honestly just so, like a, yeah. this one. Yeah, so this tattoo is just um, an illustration of this one artist that I like. And I reached out to her and I asked her if I could use it. But I guess she's too big and she didn't respond to me. So I was like, I asked. <laughs> Free game. And I got this done in uh, Argentina. Okay. And uh, how much do you think you would pay for this here in the States? Easily two fifty, three hundred dollars 300 more. Yeah, more. right? Like that fine line. Yeah. This should cost like... $75. Oh, shit. Yeah. But you got to pay for the ticket to get to Argentina. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about some places you've been traveling to because you're a pretty good extensive traveler. Oof. Recently, I went to Guatemala. Uh, have you ever been? What are you, by the way? Are you just like? Are you uh, just like white? Italian. Okay, Italian. That's what, that's what I claim either way. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, I went to Guatemala recently. And uh, that place is... No fucking joke. I've, I've traveled many different places and I've never met such kind people, especially like being an Asian person traveling anywhere in the world. People are like Chinese, ni hao, Chinese, <laughs> ni hao. And it's like, God damn it. Like, I'm not fucking Chinese. Like, no offense to the Chinese, but like, I'm not Chinese. Like, can I be something a little better? Maybe Korean? Um. But uh, yeah, I never got that feeling in Guatemala. They were just like actually interested in you. They weren't like judging you. And it's just a fucking gorgeous place. And I had to go meet a friend in Lake Atitlan, which is like a famous lake in South America. And that shit took me 18 hours of travel to get there. It's only a four hour drive, but like they were having protests. So I had to like catch a boat in the middle of the night and I had to like, get on a bus in the middle of the night to like go around the protest. It was honestly scary, but I find scary fun. And you travel, you travel by yourself, a group of friends or however you usually do. I like to travel. I like pair travel. Okay. Cause like, if it's a group, I really hate hurting everyone. Yeah. Cause everyone will just annoy the shit out of me. Like one person has a detail plan. Yes. We're going to wake up four in the morning and go spear fishing. You know <laughs> You can go ahead and do that. <laughs> Spear fishing. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. So I have a friend who I always go travel with, okay. and we're like very like minded. So it's a good, it's a good pair. So let me ask you this. So suppose like uh, there's a lady out there, a female, they want to travel, but they have no one to travel with, right? So they have to go on their own. So like, man, I can't travel my own. I'm a female. I'm scared. What would you tell this person? Like, I would literally be like, yo, what? Just. I want, I want the words buck up come to mind. <laughs> Just like, it's the fucking world. I mean, like, you're gonna, yes, it's gonna be scary. Yes, you're gonna get into situations where you're like freaking the fuck out. But that's the fun part about travel. Yeah. So honestly, I feel like you have to decide what kind of traveler you are. Like, are you a resort and pina colada traveler? Or are you a let's like, let's chase death? Yeah. And so definitely chase death. Yeah. Yeah. Like get, just get the fuck out there and just yeah. go explore. Like you'll be fine. Yeah. So here's a story for you. So um, I have a good friend of mine, Kevin, like he, he does all my podcast stuff for me. And so he's from Laos. His wife, Mina is from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And back, back in January or February this year, they, Hey, Jason, you know, so Mina, his wife has taken some kind of import export class mm -hmm. at a local college. 
And so the, the cl cloud is a uh, class gonna go to Vietnam for 10 days of September. Kevin like, man, I'm, I'm gonna go with my wife and take time off from a job. But man, can you come hang with me, Jason? Like, dude, I ain't gonna go to Vietnam. Are you kidding me, right? <laughs> Vietnam, get the fuck out of here, right? And so a couple of months passed, hey, Jason, man, are you, you know, I have nothing to do. Come hang out with me. You know, tickets are pretty cheap. Said no again. And finally, like, two weeks before I had, like, man, what, what am I doing, right? When am I get a chance to go to Vietnam where people speak the culture and all that kind of stuff? So I went, right? I had a fucking blast. Right? Yeah. Went to Ho Chi Minh City, went to the beach, ate, did all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Like, eating snails and just, like, it was crazy. It was, like, I got a tattoo my last day there on my calf. Oh, shit. Yeah. It was a wild time, right? Let me see. I want to see the tattoo. Yeah. Can you show me right now? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. That is really nice. No, that is really nice. Yeah. Whoa, are you like all tatted up? Yeah. Like on your chest and no, like, oh, like one so. Of my mm -hmm. and legs, like calves, um, and all my arms and stuff here. So mm -hmm. I have like 66. I have like 66 of them. Holy shit. Yeah. They're all like mean stuff to me, like all like personal stuff, you know? Yeah. Just like thoughts and like yeah. things that you just want on your body. Yeah. That's one thing where I feel like people with tattoos, like, I feel like sometimes they don't always have to have some like philosophical meaning. Yeah. Like if you just want it because you like it yeah. or it looks cool, just fucking get it. Yeah. Like this one here, uh, me and my two nieces got this like master tattoos in Dallas like last year. Uh huh. Yeah. Just stuff like that. And it's dope. And it's just like, it's just a memory of like you yep. hanging out with your niece. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Vietnam was a fun time. I'm glad I went. Um, where, so I also have been to Vietnam twice and by myself. Freaking love that yeah. country. Those people are super nice too. Yeah. And the food is like, oh yeah. Oh, good, the yeah. food is so good. And they're so entrepreneurial. Like they, they, they get the hustle. All right. Like every five minutes. Want to buy a bottle of water? Want to buy this? Want to buy that? Yeah. Now they do take it overboard sometimes. And one time, me and my camera was like walking around we flip flops. When I was trying to do, we have flip flops on. Like, what are you doing right now, right? I I love Vietnamese people because I feel like they know how to drink. Oh yeah. They just they just love to party. Oh, here's another story, right? So I mean, I can drink a lot of beer, right? And I'm not sure the picture, right? So I went to uh, Mina's uncle's house, uncle's aunt's house, right? So we're there with a couple of their friends, right? And like they had so much beer and food, right? And like, I, I, you know, of course, everyone that speaks Vietnamese, Vietnamese, but me and Kevin don't, right? I told Kevin, hey, man, I don't want to be a punk man. I got to tap out, right? And like, yeah. He's like, yeah, man, it's a lot of fucking beer. Right? <laughs> and I guess the uncle kind of understood. He said, uh, so you grab like a beer bottle like this. Uh-huh. One more. I, okay, okay, one more. Like, okay. Like, and he said, like, he'll be right back, right? This motherfucker went and got like a fucking case. Oh, my God. That's Vietnamese people right there. I said, like, oh, I, 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 I can't fuck with this, Kevin. <laughs> like, I, like, I was defeated. And, like, and when I fact, that day, I didn't drink another beer for like six weeks after that. Oh my God. I was, so, I was so beard out. How'd you tapped out? I was tapped out, yeah. Um, but I also feel like um, Vietnamese people are like super hospitable oh, yeah. too. Like, yeah. yeah, you want one more, I'll go buy a fucking case. Mm -hmm. And also, um, they, they just be so small, but they drink so much. Oh, yeah. And they're so like I was kind of tired, and the and the aunt like offered me to go sleep on the bed. Like go take a nap, take a nap. No, I'm fine. No, no, like I'm not gonna sleep in your bed, right? But thank you, right? Yeah. Oh, I love Vietnamese people. Yeah, I definitely want to go back. You went to I think it's called Bang Nang Beach. That was a great, great place. Oh, that's really nice. So you said your uh your friend Kevin is Laotian. Yeah. Oh wow, there's there's a big Laotian community here in Seattle, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. And his wife is Korean? Uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Yeah. And her name is Mina? Mina, yeah. Mina's a Korean name. Is it? Yeah. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a Vietnamese name, too. It was a great time, though. So, tell me about this time you went, like, swimming in the glacier. Oh, the gla oh, glacier. Um, glacier, I went right after I had broken up with my ex and my best friend came to visit me and we drove out to Glacier for a week and we slept in my car and we just went hiking all over the, the park and we went, we were like the two, uh, it was funny because like me and my best friend, like we like to dress cute. Like even if we're going hiking, like we're going to dress cute. 
And I remember we were like wearing like, um, like these kind of like crop top sports bras with like really tight, like cute, like hiking pants. And we like got off the, the... on the hiking trail, you know, fast me show. Yeah. We like got off on the, the hiking bus. And I just remember this woman just like waiting for the bus. And she just looks at us with her mouth. She's just like, and like we're we're in our we're thinking we're like she's probably like fucking whores. Like this is like this is a national park. Like what are they doing? Um, but we had so much fun. We were like those two crazy chicks just like jumping in those uh gla- glacier lakes or what do they call them? Like I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, glacier lakes, super cold, but like that challenging stuff, like the stuff that you don't want to do and is like scary. Um I'm very like I don't know if like masochistic is the right word, but like, I like that, like that pain, like getting to that pain, doing it and then getting out and then feeling accomplished. And it's for no one really. It's just like for myself. Like a personal challenge. Right? Yeah. Just like, I just want to like, uh, I want to feel something. I want to feel alive. What's the place you haven't traveled to yet that you, you want to go to? Um, I like third world countries uh to travel in i would like to go to ooh i want to go to like mongolia okay or like uh i know like a lot of people might be like this is weird but i want to go to russia uh-huh. like i want to see that like hardcore shit uh-huh. just cuz it's you, you want to so- see all the dash cam videos on the internet of that <laughs> I want to see it. I don't know. Maybe not now, but like, I don't know. It seems interesting. It seems crazy. Um, definitely don't want to go to North Korea. Yeah. That, that's, that North Korea is like. Man, I'm a big believer that, you know, a lot of stuff is luck, right? Like, I think someone did establish, like, is a one in three chance of us even being born. Imagine, like, if you're born, like, today in North Korea, like, how fucked you are, right? Dude. Like, you have no chance. No one's come to save you. You don't know anything. You're malnutrition. And of course, you don't know any better because you think this I want to live. You have right? no idea. Yeah. You have no idea, right? I, yeah, it's fucking scary. I, I don't know if you know of that one woman who escaped North Korea. And yeah. She's like, Young Me Kim. Yeah. She was on Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you heard that podcast? I had to watch that in like three parts because yeah, it, I, yeah. it was so fucking heavy. I know. It's real heavy. Yeah. I just like, you have to like collect your shit and like make a shit quota. Do you remember that part? Like, that's insane. That is insane. Like, <laughs> gotta make my shit quote. I'm like, it's not a joke, but it's just like so. I mean, it's not like a fucking, it's not like a fucking um, South Park skit. You know? yes, exactly. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> I know. It's so out of this world that I just can't imagine. I know it. she talks about like how she gets frustrated, like America who protests, how we say America sucks. Like, are you kidding me, right? Yeah. Like, go to a North Korea for a Seriously. day. Seriously. Even like when I do go travel and having the time of my life, like towards the end, I was like, dang, I miss like order. Yeah. Like I miss like being able to drive a car and yeah. get anywhere you want. Oh, uh, talk about order and stuff. When, when, what year were you in Vietnam? I was there in 2013 and then again in 2016. I'm assuming you had to do the walk of death. What was that? Walking across the road. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The walk of yes. death. Oh, the walk of death. Is that what they call it? That's what I call it. Yeah. 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 I feel like you just gotta go. Yeah. You By the second day, I was just going. Right? Yeah. Like, they they know. Like yeah, they, they know to go, go around, around you. Go. Yeah. You can't stop. Just gotta like just walk a like a leap of faith. Like yeah. like I was joking with my like my friend Kevin. Like even if you're the atheist, you believe in God when you cross that street. Yeah. yeah. Literally, that you just gotta go for it. Yeah. And but it works, right? I mean. I think I seen we seen one accident while I was there the whole time. Someone got hit on the street, but it was their fault. They were like walking like zigzaggy and stuff, you know. So yeah, you could tell they're gonna get hit, right? But yeah, the system works. Like no one like it's not like all drive like twenty miles an hour. No one's going forty or fifty or yeah. five. It's like, but it's like, and then you see like the people on the scooters, like eighteen thousand people on one scooter, you know? Yeah, <laughs> literally a whole ass ten person family on one yeah. scooter. One time yeah. we seen this this two people with a big ass plane of glass. Uh-huh. On the scooter, yeah, it's, it's insane. I love it though. Yeah, and of course, you know, there's no thing as Osra. By the hotel, they're building a scaffolding. They're like no, no, no safety harnesses for people on flip flops, power drills. <laughs> oh, or like if you ever go hiking in like uh uh I went hiking in Nepal and like it was like a five-day hike, and like the 
the people who the locals are just hiking it up in flip flops mm -hmm. and like everyone else is like decked out in like the yeah. best like hiking gear. Yeah. It just makes us look like such like yeah such punks. yeah such punks. Yeah, it's insane. Um, so, of all the places you travel to, what's a place like you really like? But people are like you like it there. Like that's impossible. A place that I really like. But people would like be kind of like, how do you like it there? Oh, hmm. Maybe India. India. Because I mean, India is like. India is really dirty. Like How does dirty, poor, yeah, sanitation. stinky, just everything, uh, bad pollution. It's just like really bad uh, environments, environmental state. But I feel like once you step foot in India, you just have to like completely get rid of the idea of yeah. being clean. Yeah, like just know you won't be clean until you go back home. Yeah. So I think as long as you just like. I'm dirty and I'm going to stay dirty. You can just enjoy it. I don't know if you know that guy on YouTube. He's um, a travel blogger. His name is Bald and Bankrupt. Oh, he is my favorite travel blogger ever because he just immerses himself in every country he goes to. And, you know, there's always like a lot of like hagglers wherever you go in any country. And usually like as Americans or any like other first world traveler like we get pissed off we're just like oh my god like can you leave me the fuck alone yeah. but this guy like makes friends with these people mm -hmm. and it kind of shows you like everyone's just out here just trying to like, yeah. live you um, gotta, especially if you're not, you gotta you gotta respect the hustle right yeah yeah so we went to that so we stayed by that the big market in ho chi Minh city or saigon the dang mang market what it's called the big yeah 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 uh-huh if you walk in there like just they like you know, hustling whatever sit yeah. down we take this for you we're gonna eat half price all this kind of stuff right? yeah yeah you got to respect it. They're just out here doing, trying to do their best. Like I was saying, they're more entrepreneurial than most Americans are. Definitely. Definitely. We're lazy. We just like jump into like nine to five and just yeah. like no, hate our lives. It is kind of annoying sometimes eating out, sometimes eat dinner and like 20,000 people walk by. It is. I just can't buy this. God damn, dude. Like, fuck. Can you stop eating? <laughs> or how's this restaurant like deliver this walk through sell shit to us? Even They must be getting a cut of this. Or something, <laughs> no. Yeah, for sure. They're all working together. Yeah. Um. So what's the next place you're going to travel to? I'm going to, I'm actually going to Mexico okay. this weekend. Are you? What part? I'm going to Tulum. Okay. Actually, which I never was like a Tulum. I feel like the term is like a Tulum girly, which is like, you know, you you go and you get all like dressed up and cute. And like, you like go to like all the boho places and like all the beach parties. Um, I'm not trying to do that. I'm actually uh, just trying to like go relax on the beach. My favorite thing to do, honestly, my favorite thing to do when traveling is drink coffee in the morning on a beautiful balcony. And that's it. That to me right there is like, ugh, I'm on vacation. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. Okay. How long are you going to be there? For like a week. Okay. Yeah. It's like a little like winter getaway. Okay. Yeah. Get some sun. Get some sun. Yeah. And I didn't pay for my ticket, so. So um, what makes someone a creative? Like, can I say I'm Jason Cadness, I'm a creative, or like how's that process work? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. The first thing that comes to mind though is like when people call themselves creative directors, which I feel like I have in the past, and I just hate that term for some reason. Um, I think everybody can be a creative in their own way. I think today in in this world of like advertising, we have this uh, like kind of template of like what a creative person is or should look like or the type of ideas they should produce. But I think that all that shit is fucking stupid. I think, honestly, the more experiences you have in your life, the more creative you can be. You can pull from like all the places, foods, people that you've met, situations that you've been in and like apply that to an idea or a product or whatever it is. So I think everyone can be creative in their own way. I just hate when people call themselves like I am the creative person and you are not because that's fucking dumb.
Can an introvert be a creative? And if they can, does it is it a more challenge for an introvert to be a creative? Introverts to be creative. I don't, I don't, introverts, they need to get out there. That's how I feel. Introverts need to get out there to find creativity unless, I don't know, like, where else are you finding inspiration from? Because creativity comes from inspiration, right? We're always just like copying each other. And the only thing I can think of is like, if you're an introvert, like, are you like meditating? Like, are you like transcending and like... Are you are you getting like ideas and inspiration from like ancestors and like otherworldly things? Because how else are you gonna find creative inspiration? Are you an introvert? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you do when you're at home? Um, watch TV, listen to music. Um, just regular stuff, I guess. You know, basic introvert stuff. Yeah. So I'm actually on the Mario Briggs. I'm an INFJ. Uh huh. And so like it's kind of strange, like. Like I'm an introvert, like I don't like small talk or whatever, but like I love like getting in front of speaking in front of people, like doing events, you know, mm-hmm. as long as I can control it, right? Mm-hmm. Like people say all the time, you're not you're not introvert, you're, you host a podcast, exactly. I'm fucking uh, controlling everything, oh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Um, I have no idea which Myers Briggs thing I am. Yeah. What's your? Uh, do you believe in horoscopes? Not really. No. Do you know your Sagittarius? Oh, huh. Interesting. I don't believe it, but I have the Sagittarius thing tattooed on my arm. I don't believe it, but I just haven't tattooed on me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just in case that's just real. <laughs> that's funny. Check out all your bases. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um. And so you're, uh, so you're, you're, both your parents came here from Korea, or? Yeah, my yeah, both my parents are Korean. Um, my mom came to Virginia when she was like in middle school, and then my dad came here when he was like. 20s 30s okay so my mom is like pretty americanized um and she moved back to korea when i went to college okay so she's back in korea and my dad's still here okay yeah um were there any challenges for you like growing up as like of a kid of an immigrant or anything like that mm, i think the most challenging part was not actually the fact that they were immigrants but the fact that they were like always fighting <laughs> Like they got divorced when I was like seven. And I remember um, vividly like having my white friends come over to my house and like my parents would be like screaming at each other in the living room in the dark. And I remember one time like I saw like someone holding a knife at like the other parent. And I just remember being like, oh, let's go upstairs. <laughs> uh, that was the only thing I didn't really, um, I never really felt different being yeah. Korean. Do you think that where well, your parents is a Korean thing? Because I had a, another Korean guest on here like a, a couple weeks ago. She pretty much told these two minutes like the same story, right? Her, yeah. her kid, like her parents fighting all the time. You yeah. Know? So maybe it's like Korean culture. I, I don't know. I mean, like, maybe like one of the place things. I think it's definitely culture related because like them motherfuckers have trauma. <laughs> like trauma. And they don't really believe in therapy yeah. or healing. The knife is the tra- therapy. Yeah. Me yeah. slicing your ass up is my fucking therapy. You're just sneaking around, uh, having affairs. Like, that's their therapy. Uh-huh. So I feel like just they are so old-fashioned in that sense. Like, we fight. We don't talk things out. Like, we fight about it. And um, I, I remember when I told my mom that I started going to therapy a few years ago. I was like nervous to tell her because I knew she would judge me you about weakling. it. Yeah, you're you're not a Korean no more. You're 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 American. I just own you. Literally, she was like, "Why are you going to therapy?" And I was like, "Cause y'all fucked me up." <laughs> and she was like, "You don't need therapy. Like you're fine. Mm-hmm. Like the way that you grew up is so much better than how I grew up." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, that makes sense." But like, you still pass that shit down to me. Mm-hmm. And now I want to be better. So that was a whole conversation. But um, yeah. And how often you go back to Korea? At least once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I went last year and I went for like a month and a half. And I was like, this is enough. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to go back. I was like butt to butt with my mom for like three months straight. Mm. I was like, I need to go home. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Do you want another pour? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You want to do the same one? You want to try something different? Uh, it's up to you. Let's see. 
No, nah, let's stick with the bullet. Okay. You have a favorite bourbon? Cheers. I like bullet. Do you? Okay. I feel like bullet's like a good like standard. Um, but I'm actually I switched over to vodka. Did you? It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, I feel embarrassed when I say that. Why? I don't know because I feel like vodka is such like a pussy drink. It's such like a, <laughs> it's like such like a white girl drink. Like I literally will go a place and be like, let me get a vodka soda lime, mm -hmm. and I feel so weird saying it. <laughs> you have like a favorite brand? Vodka. Yeah. Uh, Tito's. Tito's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm so basic. Yeah. So basic. I hate it. That is a basic white girl. I have so basic white girl yeah. drink. Basic white girl. Vodka. <laughs> Don't tell anyone <laughs> except for all these people. So, um, talk about social media a little bit. Does hashtags on social media even matter? And and then and if it does, does it matter on what platform? Like TikTok hashtags matter, or LinkedIn hashtags matter, or like, does it matter at all? Hashtags matter. Hashtags are like you can see them as like SEO. Like they will put you into buckets of content. Um, so depending on the hashtag that you use, that is where the platform will push out your content. But what irks me is that is when people think that they can create their own hashtags, because let's say we're on this show and we use the hashtag um, Seattle Jason podcast, but that's not a legit category in Instagram's eyes or in TikTok's eyes. So I don't think people can create their own. No, it's not. I don't think I know people can't create their own hashtags and believe that the platform will push it out. We need to be using hashtags that people are actually looking up. So like podcasts, Seattle local, Seattle creative, things like that, things that people are actually like searching for on those platforms are the types of hashtags people should be using. And I'm guessing each platform, like LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, the number of hashtags you use are, are varies on each platform. Mm -hmm. It does, but for Instagram, I would try and keep it to less than 10. Like five is a good number because Instagram is now cracking down on bots and like uh, fraud fraudulent accounts. And those are the accounts that are using like, 50 hashtags like you, you see those posts that use so many freaking hashtags those are like bots or people just trying to like buy followers so instagram is cracking down on that stuff and they specifically will shadow ban or like kind of um not push out your content if you're putting out if you're using a bunch of hashtags what does that term mean i heard all the time like people we on on, like, on on social media i got shadow banned mm -hmm. like, first of all how do you know you got shadow banned right mm -hmm. like you know like what is that? There's no way to actually tell. Like, there's no, like, Instagram or TikTok will not. Actually, TikTok will. TikTok will send you a notification if they shadow ban you for your content. I mean, like, are you shadow banned or does your content just fucking suck right now? Uh, I guess it just depends. But honestly, if you have had, like, high engagement for, like, months, like, you've had, like, 150 likes on each post average for the past, like, year or so, and then all of a sudden you post something that might be like a little iffy or like that might go against their content regulations, then, and you're, you see that your likes are just dropping drastically, you're probably shadow banned. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes it's like hard to dig yourself out of a yeah. shadow ban hole okay. because you can't even really contact Instagram yeah. or Facebook. Yeah. I know Facebook is like notorious, for like not having like good customer service. Like, yeah. You're like, I, I've seen like on, on the internet, people like, Hey, um, I got overcharged for ads. I'm trying to get money back. No one's like, it's like crickets, you know? They don't give a shit. They, they are like way too big. Facebook is headquartered here, right? Meta? I think they're in the Bay Area. Oh, are they? I, I know they have offices here. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I always feel, I feel like going out to parties and stuff in um, Seattle and meeting people who like work at Meta or there like are a lot of people here. Yeah. Amazon, Google. I don't know why. I just like have instant judgment. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not good, but I'm instantly just like, ugh, you work for them. Fucking tick, bro. Yeah, like, ugh, have fun. <laughs> what, do you have, like, good benefits or something? <laughs> That's funny. You have health insurance? Good for you. So, um, for uh, A-B testing, like, how, like, first of all, I always say do A-B testing, right? But most people are like, 
dude, I don't have time to A-B test, right? Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, I don't know how to do it. It's too much time. So how, how do you do A-B testing without doing it? If that makes any sense. Or is it just a case you have to fucking suck it up and do the work? Honestly, when it comes to social media, like, if you hire someone, totally they should have a strategy and a plan for you. That's why you hired them. But if you are just trying to do it yourself, I would try not to get into like the nitty gritty of strategy and just, just freaking post yeah. like our, our tagline for our business is don't overthink it because literally at the end of the day, it is just social media. Yeah. It is just a platform, just post whatever your little heart desires and the people that support you will love the content that you're yeah. putting out. It's when we start, like what that guy at that workshop that we were at, um, Big Dogs, Hot Dogs, mm -hmm. he was saying that his engagement went like increased dramatically when he stopped uh, posting curated things. Yes. And when he just started posting whatever he wanted to that that he vibed with, that's when shit started popping off. Yeah. And I was like, that that's why, because people like you and they want to see what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. One thing can be too, people like, 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 oh, only post one time a day. If you post more than once, you're like, you get spammed with people. Like, first of all, do you see how many posts on fucking LinkedIn and social media? Literally. If you post one a day, no one's going to fucking see it, right? Yeah. Like, and, and like, post them, oh, I see an opportunity to post today. Thank you. You know, like, you yeah. Know, thank you. You know, yeah. It always kills me. Oh, don't post one time a day. Oh, you know, like, dude, there's no fucking way. Yeah. Like, we can all come up with these rules about social media. And like, obviously, because I own a social media agency, like we have to follow these rules, like best practices. But if you're just running it on your own as a business owner, just do your best. Just post as much as you can. And we could all these like so-called experts online, you know, they're like, none of them work for Instagram, none of them work for LinkedIn. Yeah. Just random people. They only post once a day on LinkedIn or do this, do that. You're like, there's no word that says you'd work for LinkedIn on Instagram or TikTok on your on your thing, right? Literally, those people piss me the fuck off. Just like guaranteed results with if you post three times a week at this specific time, it's like, Jesus Christ, like it doesn't work like that. And then like you said, like if you're doing a search too much, like you don't have time. Like I don't have time to research. Like do I post at 6 p.m. Eastern time, L.A. time? Do I 60 second video, 30 second video? Yeah. Do I make the captions orange, yellow? Like I ain't got time for this. Shit. No, 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 you don't have time for it. Just do what you can. But don't post like past like 9 p.m. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Just like think about like put yourself in the shoes of your audience. Like when are you uh when are you like actually scrolling through yeah. your phone? Now of course you're Mr. Beast. That's a whole freaking story, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Beast. Yeah. That <laughs> guy, story, right? Yeah, Mr. Beast. He's on a whole nother level. Honestly, he's probably part of the Illuminati or something. Probably so. Social media Illuminati. So uh, he wants another uh, do you know who Lex Fridman is? Mm-mm. I'll send the link. He has a big time. He's like an AI scientist out of Russia as a podcast. Oh. And she so had like Mr. Beast on the one time. And Mr. Beast was telling the story like he did the first YouTube video at 11, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're making YouTube videos all through school, right? And unfortunately, like he deleted the first thousand he did because he thought they sucked so much. Mm -hmm. But so he has the rest of them since then. And so he makes the videos to high school, like doing some friends, making them whatever. Not making any money, right? He's making like season decent in high school. Mm -hmm. And he's in, he's a station. He's uh, in North Carolina. His mother's a single soldier in Fort Bragg. And the mother says, hey, um, I can't remember his real name, but hey, Mr. Beast, you're going to go to junior college, right? Mm -hmm. I'm paying for it, and you better pass, mm -hmm. right? And so he goes to class two or three days, like, nah, I can't do this fucking shit, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm killing it, right? So he decided then, like, he'd always been, like, all in on YouTube videos. This had like, really went all in, right? Like, mm -hmm. through his friends, they're making videos, doing A-B tests, all kind of stuff, right? Crickets, nothing, 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 like, struggling, right? Grades come out, like, a Friday, right? It's Monday. He's like, fuck, I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. gonna fucking, I mean, white mother's gonna kill me, right? That Wednesday, someone paid him twenty thousand dollars to do the YouTube channel for him. Two uh -huh. days before the grace came out. That Thursday, he said, "Hey, mom, uh, I'm quitting school. I got twenty thousand. I'm moving out tomorrow." Can you imagine the shit he was going through those those few days? Like, he felt like I'm, I'm literally gonna die on Friday. But my father, I'm not going to school, and I wasted some money. Dude, I feel like those. And back then, his mom was like. You, what the fuck is this bullshit, right? Of course, yeah. now you're like all in, like, yeah, because he's taking care of her and stuff. Yeah. But like, I feel like, oh, I gotta sneeze. I feel like once you say it out loud, it goes away. Damn it. Um, oh, it's still there. No, it's not. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, I think about like uh, those moments in your life when like you feel like you're going to die or yeah. something or like something terribly is not going your way. And then like all, always every single time something shows up for you. Yeah. Except I think about like that that type of stuff happens to like most people that I know. But I wonder if that stuff ever happens to like homeless people. Mm, that's a good question. Okay. You know? Like, do you have you have those situations in your life too, where you're like, yeah. "Oh shit, I'm struggling," or like something's not going right, but yeah. like something always comes to save your day, or like you get through it. Yeah, I have a good answer for you, right? I think like stuff comes to people. What's the thing? You know, opportunity can only knock; it can't open the door for you, right? And so there's a guy. So my podcast is right next to the post office, right? And so in the front of the post office, I moved here in March. Just every day, there's a guy that pretty much lives in the doorway of the post office, right? Mm -hmm. And so. According to a couple of people in the building, that guy has been there like 10 years, right? Wow. And like people offer him help, offer him stuff, you know, he always tell them, no, I'm good, right? So the people offer him like, hey, like lots of help, right? He's yeah. Like, no. I mean, they say, women say has dementia, different things, you know, but he's there like every day from like eight to four. He goes somewhere at night, you know, but yeah, it's been like only 10 years and people always always ask for help. I asked to help him, like he's always saying no, right? So. I think I saw him. Yeah. I think he was down there. Yeah, probably so. I wonder why he says no. Yeah. So here's my solution to homeless problem, right? And I don't know people won't agree with this, right? So I think we're, we're, I think every homeless person has someone like a daughter, a mother, a friend, a cousin, right? Mm -hmm. That if they called, that person would help them out. Mm -hmm. But they have too much pride, right? Like I say this, mm -hmm. if I was homeless, I think if I could call no one, right? Like, mm -hmm. no, I have too much pride, right? Mm -hmm. But it has to be some kind of way where like, just like Big Brother stuff, you go like the person at the post office, scan their eyeball. Okay, this is John. <laughs> this is John Brown. His daughter is in, you know, uh, Denver, Colorado. Hey, are you the daughter's home? Yeah. I haven't seen him like six years while he's here. Oh, shit. Let me come get him, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if some, you got an email from somebody, say, hey, your cousin so and so is like, I having would trouble. be up there yeah. in a second. But that person, like I said, I'm saying this, but I would never ask for help because I have too much pride, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going people have too much pride. And then they say you can't help, you can't force to get help, but you're just going to let them live in the street, you know? Yeah. And of course, there's like, you know, um, mental illness, drugs, all this kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it's a complicated problem. Like I, I, I say people with way more money and way more than me haven't figured it out yet. So I mm -hmm. can't figure out either. Right. Yeah. I feel like homelessness is one of those, like there's topics that I don't want to talk about in Seattle yeah. because I'm from the East coast and Oh man, there were so many different times where I was almost canceled mm -hmm. when I moved here. Cause like, I just feel like people are way more um, sensitive yeah. And they're very woke yeah. and liberal and forward thinking and like. But yet, just, but yet all these people in the fucking streets dying. Yeah. And it's just like. All the drugs and stuff. Yeah. And I go to parties and it's just like, oh my God, shut up. Just like fucking shut up. Let's just, let's just have fun. Like, do we always have to be so like woke about everything? And like, so homelessness is like, I just think it all boils down to like mental health and just like, isn't Washington one of the states where it's like the hardest to get uh state provided health insurance i mean mental health insurance or something like that like yeah. there's like not as many providers or yeah. something like that which yeah. is insane because we're in like yeah I, I know like, way back in the day that they used to put all the mental people like in, in institutions but i was like you know that was inhumane so they got rid of other institutions but now they're in the streets yeah or how humane is that yeah yeah honestly i I don't pay attention to like Seattle politics. Um, it's so frustrating. Do you? Not really. I try not to. So Me it's, too. Because it's, it's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do yeah. about it? I'm just going to watch it and get mad. Some of this is so silly. Like back when they're doing all the protests, right? That one councilman, the socialist, she went like, okay, she did a protest. to her. all like, you're the fucking councilman. Are you protesting yourself, right? Like, what are you yeah. doing, right? Wait, 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 wait. Like, yeah. Like in 2020, like all the, all the protests, right? She like, led a bunch of protesters to see hall and you know unlock the door and so i just take over like how do you take it over you fucking unlock the door oh my god <laughs> it's like lock over you take over the, you unlock the door it was a it was a woman yeah she definitely did that shit for votes oh yeah 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 so crazy stuff like that you know it's 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 insane here right yeah and then like do you live in seattle south or in the suburbs i live in uh in north so i live in wallingford okay me too we think it's crazy like Seattle and Bellevue, 10 minutes apart, that's completely different. Right? Yo, yes. Completely different. Right? Yes. Like, you might see a homeless person in Bellevue once in a blue moon, mm -hmm. but they don't last for long, right? I know. It's like, 
it's like so different, right? Bellevue is like, uh, Bellevue reminds me of uh, Tyson's Corner, where I'm from, mm -hmm. which is like the rich area. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I never go over to Bellevue. Yeah. Do you live in South Seattle? I live down in a town called DuPont, down uh -huh. south of Tacoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like Bellevue. I just like the vibe. The, yeah. It's nice. It's it's yeah. bougie. Yeah. Yeah, you go walk around the mall. Yeah, Seattle fucking grimy and shit. Oh my god, yeah, I'd never come down here, honestly. I just stay in my neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And so you live in Tyson's Corner? Uh when I was so I lived in I'm from Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. Know anything about Northern Virginia? I know uh I've been there a couple of times, but uh I was gonna ask you, you ever go to Georgetown? That yeah. area? Yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan of the Georgetown district. I love that area. Georgetown in DC? Yeah. 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 Georgetown is nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I I never really liked Northern Virginia growing up, but the older I get, the more I'm like missing it. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, it's not a bad place to grow yeah. up. And like all my friends and family are there. So how do you come to Seattle? How did I come here? Yeah. Job or business or? No, my ex at the time, I was living in New York before this and my ex really hated it. And so uh, I was like, fine. Where do you want to go? Because I could work anywhere. He was like, let's go to Seattle. So we came to check it out and I fell in love. Yeah. He it's like I got trapped. It's like if you come to Seattle during the summer, oh yeah, yeah. you will get freaking trapped because oh, yeah. you're like, it is the most gorgeous place it in is. all of North America. Yeah. And if, so if come in January, get me out of this god for a second. <laughs> uh, so we I was like, hell yeah, let's move. And so we moved here and then like a year and a half later, we broke up. Yeah. So I just stayed. stayed. Yeah. What part of New York did you live? I lived in Astoria. Okay. So it's like Greek town. That's the neighborhood of Manhattan, right? No, it's in a uh, Long Island City. Okay. Which is right across the bridge. Okay. Yeah. That's on my bucket list. Like live in New York City like six months or something, you know? Mm -hmm. just, you like, should. Just to do that. Yeah. Six months is enough though. Yeah. Honestly, I wish I would have gone there. I'm sure I don't want to be like in the winter time. Don't want to be this hot as hell. You know, I got to time it right. Yeah, you got to time it right. I don't want to be like December. I think, you know. No, no, no. Even in the summer, like yeah. that trash will just stink yeah. up the whole city. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had moved to New York when I was younger, mm -hmm. though, because I moved there when I was like 26 and I started feeling like a little old and lazy then. Yeah. I wish I could have gone when I was like 21 because then I would have like partied and like dated and like did all that stuff. So the name of your company, does it mm -hmm. mean anything or just a random name? Yeah. So Kami stands for the K.A., stands for uh, Kathy, which is my business partner's mom's name. She passed away when we were kids. And then the me, the M-I in Kami stands for Mia, which is my mom's name. Okay. So we just combine the two because we're like mommy's girls. We're like, we owe our lives to them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So your best part actually is in D.C., right? Mm -hmm. So talk about the pros and cons of like having like a bi-coastal team like that? Mm. Well, first pro is like having a business partner in general is just like a blessing. I could not do this by myself. And we are completely different in terms of like uh, how we go about clients and business. Like I feel like I'm way more hot-headed and aggressive. Like I will just get in there and just like, what's the point of this? And she is more like, She's like a good client liaison and like keeps things smooth. And she's like very friendly and like has like a a more uh, judicial view on like thoughts and processes. Um, the bi-coastal thing freaking sucks because we only get a few hours a day to work together. Um, but it's good for us because she is not a morning person. And I'm a morning person. So the times actually kind of like match up. Um, but guess what? She is actually on her way to Seattle right now. She's about to move in with me. She's going to be here this weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, she's in like Kansas City right now. She's like driving across. Oh, That's a hell of a fucking drive. Yeah. She's doing it by herself. Like a G. So why did she decide to move here? Just for business reasons or y'all got really close friends or? Well, I, I, so... After I uh, broke up with my ex, I was like, shit, I'm paying for this like $2,200 apartment by myself. Like there's two rooms here. I don't know if I can afford it. 
And so I like asked her, I was like, why don't you just like come out here and live with me? Help me pay the rent. Yeah. We could work on our business. And she was like, she's single. She's, she's like, fuck yeah. Yeah. So she's coming out. So you're going to introduce her to some tech bros? Oh my God. <laughs> she is definitely not into tech bros. I tell you what. She's into like, she's into like spiritual boys. Okay. Are there spiritual boys in Seattle? I'm sure there are. Somewhere. Maybe like guys who like, I don't know. Oh yeah, there's definitely spiritual boys. Like yeah. guys who like take shrooms and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That <laughs> definitely, yeah. Definitely. No doubt about that. Yeah. That's what she's into. Uh have you ever done shrooms? Yeah. Yeah. Do all that stuff. Um have you tried penis envy? That is like a new strain of shrooms. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a new strain of shrooms that is like really potent and like the best on the market. And um, uh, my ex left a whole chocolate bar of it mm -hmm. in the refrigerator. Okay. So for like years, I've been scared to do shrooms mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, I just was, like, nervous and didn't want to do Think it. Brain's going to blow up or something. Yeah, like, like, I don't take know. Take you some dark places. It's exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's scary because you're going to, like, you're going to find some shit out about some yourself. Demon from the the yeah. monster from the, the, under your bed from third grade is going to pop back out. I have you now. Yeah, and I was scared of that shit. So, um, now, um, I don't know why. I feel, like, much more powerful after breaking up. Like, I just feel more, like, I am myself again. Like I'm fucking, I could do whatever the fuck I want. And so I am trying to plan a shroom trip for myself. Um, like sometime this week. Cause I have that whole bar of penis envy and I really just want to like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to figure out. I don't know if there's anything to figure out at all, but I want to do it and see if anything comes out. That's going to be a fun experience. I know. And I always cry whenever yeah. I'm on drugs. Do you? I cry every day. I, <laughs> I cry and I get really cold. Mm -hmm. It's a weird, it's a weird uh, mix of yeah. feelings. How often have you done them? Uh, last time I did shrooms or like I did acid like a few years ago at a cabin. Yeah. And I cried for like two hours straight. Yeah. And it wasn't just cry. Like I bawled for two hours straight because yeah. I thought about how my grandpa was like kind of sick in mm -hmm. Korea. Uh -huh. And I felt like. I couldn't go visit him because of my job. Yeah. Because my job wouldn't be uh, happy if I took that time off. Yeah. And so when I took that acid, I fucking realized that that, that, that doesn't fucking matter. No, it doesn't matter. My job does not. I don't give a shit if they fucking care. Yeah. And I just cried because I felt so bad that I even had that thought. Yeah. And after the, the trip was over, I immediately booked the trip. Mm -hmm. And I, and I went back to work on Monday yeah. and I was like, I am going. That's the best thing about doing that stuff. I don't know. I said like negative stuff. Like my thing is like, it lets you realize like this doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. none, of this, none of this fucking matters. Right? None of this matters. None of this fucking matters. None of this matters. That was the first epiphany that I had when I took shrooms in college was that none of this matters. Yeah. Like none of them matters at all. It's all going to work out some kind of way. Yes. You know, like be a good person, you know, to a certain extent, you know, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. So are you, are you a, Oh, are you more mushroom person or LSD person? Mm, I think mushroom. Because yeah. LSD was like, that shit was really, really strong. Yeah. Yeah. And mushrooms, I don't know. I guess they're more organic in a way. Yeah. I've done mushroom twice. I didn't get it. To, I'm more of an LSD person. Yeah? Hmm. It's like, I just like it better. It's stronger, right? Yeah. Definitely stronger. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely stronger. Like, yeah. It's like you see more stuff. Like, you're more... Like whenever I'm on LSD, I do like this. I think LSD means I just talking and like, like what pops might come out of my head, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of weeks. Oh shit, that's a fucking weird shit. I think. You know, like, oh, that's pretty deep, you know. Yeah. I see different things. Yeah. I'm a big LSD person. Hmm. Microdose and all that kind of stuff, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But Doses, like, yeah. When you do microdose, do you are you still able to like function and oh, like yeah. go through your day? Yeah. You just feel like more giddy and like, like it, elevated. It feels like you know, like your wires in your brain are connected. Like you feel more focused. Like it's like everything like clicks. Like you know. Like boom, 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 boom. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have like ADHD or ADD or anything? No. Okay, that's good. Um, I recently found out. Well, I didn't find anything out, but I feel like I have ADHD that I never realized before. Like, do you ever do this thing where you're like trying to like prioritize parts of like 
the next five minutes of your day and you're just like you're stuck in a glitch <laughs> do you ever do that you're just uh, like stuck in a glitch in your like living room and you're like what should i do first this doesn't happen to you okay no. <laughs> okay yeah you, you're definitely no. fine yeah no, no. <laughs> Now, maybe I not, might not do it because I'm fucking lazy at that moment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just like pretending to glitch because yeah. you don't want to yeah. do anything at all. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, definitely. That's cool. Um, so I found this on your website or somewhere on your, when I was researching you. Prior proper planning prevents piss poor production. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. That is the seven P's of production. And the seven P's are the mother freaking truth. Prior proper planning prevents piss poor production. And this goes for like anything in your life. Just like prepare, just prepare for whatever events, whatever presentation, but mostly it applies to like video production. If you properly prepare all the logistics, camera angles, crew, everything is in freaking order, then the production will go smoothly. So that's the same thing for anything in life. But I really don't apply that too much to my life. <laughs> I should, but uh, for my business, I do. For my life, I should probably do more. So we talk about your travel and all the stuff you do, but what do you do for fun, like for your hobbies? Mm. For my hobbies, I... Hobbies is really just like, I don't know. What are your hobbies? Work. Work? <laughs> I'm playing. I mean, like, I like listening to music. Um, like, I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. I work with Rick and Morty a lot, you know. Uh -huh. just, I mean, just I, one thing I like, like, hang out with people, you know, like, have one-on-one -on -one time with people. I like, have a beer with them or something, you know. Uh -huh. But I guess I really don't have any hobby per se. Like, I work out when I can. Mm -hmm. I'm, like I said, you know. Like, I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't really have any hobbies, right? Okay. I mean, I would like to say, I, I know, like, I like, I like to go hiking, camping, you know, or different things but it means like hang out with people i guess yeah okay i think i'm kind of the same as you it's like i'm not like hard i feel like seattle's super hardcore about their hobbies like i am a kite surfer yeah and i go yeah. shadow border yes, like, I go every day i play pickleball 25 yeah. hours a week yeah it's like i don't do anything like that because i'm not really like i like to do a little bit of everything yeah, i'm more like a one and done person right me too like, like, I'll, I'll pick pickleball one time okay it was okay it was cool. you know. yes it's nice you know yeah Actually, I think I'm one of those people who like uh, will get into something really hard yeah. for like a few weeks and then I'll stop yeah. and I'll never do it again. It's like I just want to see if I'm good at it. And yeah. then once I realize it, then I'm done. What's the problem with that? You spend all the money, all the equipment, right? I know. You know? too. Yeah. I tried it. Play. I was addicted for like a few months and then I stopped. Yeah. Um, but hobbies, I don't know. Recently, I've been pretty like lazy. I feel like traveling is a big hobby. But other than that, laying in my bed. That's a big hobby for me. So how do you take care of yourself, both physically and mentally? Oh, I gym it up. I I'm I am uh I love to go to the gym. I love to do yoga. I'm very active. Um, but that's mostly because I I think I just like have a lot of energy pent up in me that I need to like release. And I'm also very um I have a lot of self-judgment on my body image. And this is because I was grown up. I was raised by a Korean mother who literally will just be like, you look fat all the time. Just like, why are you eating so much? Like, you don't want to get fat. And so, so growing up so with once that, again, funny, I know like, I mean, it's number, I know like four or five Korean female. All of them told me the same thing. Yeah. Story. All of them said, all, all like in different ways. My mother told me I'm fat. Yes. Like, hey, you're almost anorexic. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like we, yeah, we grow up just like, th they will just like, your auntie will see you at Christmas and be like, yeah, did you gain weight? Like you look fat. And then they'll be like, but eat, eat yeah. more, eat uh, more. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> told me I was fat. That's that's funny, but it's not funny. I know. <laughs> Honestly, it's fucking hilarious. Probably, probably need a therapy. I know. It fucks me up, but it's pretty hilarious. And at least I look pretty good. So. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, talk about the where I met you at. We, we both took part in this um, KT, the digital sales planning conference. Uh -huh. How do you get involved with that? So Kai Tita, I met David through some guy that I know, Stu. Uh, you saw Stu. He presented. He was like uh, doing the uh, Google ad stuff. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, I just met them through um, connections. Mm -hmm. And David, this is funny because, like, remember how I told you when that hate crime happened? Uh, the woman who committed the hate crime on me, that sounds so weird. It was Haitian. Was Haitian. And David is Haitian. Yeah. And David is a saint. Yeah. And David does everything for his country. And I don't know why, and maybe like not everything in life has to have a meaning or some sort of significance, but like I took that as like significance that like, even though I didn't want to blame Haiti or blame this Haitian person and like be um, like have judgment towards all their people because this woman like fucked me up for a second, I did just naturally. So after meeting David and like learning about his nonprofit and like helping his country of Haiti and like. It just, it was like full circle. It was like, it kind of like helped me be like, you know, like, don't hate, don't be a racist. Yeah. Like, don't do the hate crime back to this person. Yeah. Like, it's not just, you know, based off of so what So how often you get on the product and do, do stuff like that? Like, and talk about social media. It's a pretty rare occurrence for you or? I probably do it like six or seven times out of the year. Okay. So every, every few months okay. I do it. And uh, I love, I love that shit. And for you, as far as like business wise, what's the benefit of doing that? Um, you know, I don't normally get like clients from it because like a lot of these businesses we're talking to are like super small businesses. Yeah. Um, but what I get from it is like just letting people know that we exist and also like perfecting my craft of public speaking. And also I just get off on just like, entertaining people <laughs> so like getting up there and like doing a workshop like i like you to like make it fun you definitely have a very entertaining uh segment you think so oh yeah i think it's just like fun like i just want to make people laugh and like make people have a good time and so getting up there and like teaching people but also like having fun with them like makes me happy what's been your like from your point of view you're like your most impressive or best public speaking engagement you've done the best one like, you're like, man, like, you, you did that, like, man, I, I totally knocked out of the park. I thought that last one was pretty good. Yeah, it was. And, like, the energy of that room was good, too. Like, there was a, a good um, a good group of people. There's always, like, one person in every, like, workshop that I've uh, hosted that, like, just ticks me off or just, like, ruins the whole mood. But there was none in that one. And that was great. Cool. So, next, talk about the time you got fired from this ad agency in New York. Oh, man. Okay, so I was working in New York at a boutique ad agency, and this was during the time of my life when I still felt like your title meant your success level. So like you're a senior producer or whatever you are is uh, the- So th this was definitely pre-shrooms. Yeah, <laughs> yes, this was definitely pre-shrooms. Um, I was working for a company and I was slaving for them. I was just giving my heart and soul, blood, tears, everything for them, thinking that it was my whole life. And uh, one of my responsibilities at that job was sending our clients the company's hour log. So like we would do, um, we worked this many hours a month and you gotta pay us for those hours. One month, we were so busy, I totally forgot to send the, the timesheets. So like I didn't send those weekly timesheets. And at the end of the month, I sent them a fat like 25K bill. And they were like, what the fuck? Like you never sent us the hour log. How are you, how, how, how do I know what I'm paying for? And um, I lied. And I basically was just like, yeah, I sent it. I sent it to you and I never did. And I went on vacation and I was like, oh, I'm just going to forget about this. It'll resolve when I come back. Came back, wasn't resolved. And my boss was fighting the client about paying the bill. And so I, what I did was I went into old email threads and I like inserted, I, this is totally illegal. I like inserted the timesheet in those like old email threads and try to finesse it that like I had sent it weeks ago when I never did. And uh, my boss kept fighting this client. He wasn't trying to pay. And then like weeks later, I was like, oh, I think this like lasted like two weeks. I had crippling anxiety. Like I've never had crippling anxiety ever in my life. I just wanted to curl up in a ball. I felt so bad that I was lying about this. 
And one day my boss called me and he was like, man, that was a crazy week, right? Like, I can't believe we're fighting this client. I was like, yeah, crazy. I can't believe we're fighting them too. It's <laughs> insane. I mean, I said that thing and I couldn't take it anymore. And I eventually like was like, I confess. And I was like, I never sent the timesheet. And um, he was just like, uh, I got to call you back. Called me back five minutes later and was like, yeah, you got to go. Yeah. And I remember that I just cried so much and I grieved this loss of this fucking job. Job. It's a J-O-B. It's a freaking job. And I was like, my life is over. I can't believe I got fired. I can't believe yeah, I did how, that. How we... I was 27. Okay. Yeah. And after that, I took like a few months off because I had a severance or whatever. And uh, I realized that I was super depressed. And why the hell am I crying over a freaking job? Like, yes. Yeah, so what? I made a mistake. And it also just like made me realize that like, we make mistakes and I had such a big ego that I couldn't like fess up to the mistake that I made when I had made it. I had to like lie about it because I wanted to like upkeep this image yeah, yeah, of sure being a lot of lessons from that. Oh my gosh. I learned so many lessons. And now as a business owner, I totally understand if some, if someone that I hired did that to my business, I immediately would be like, you got to fucking go. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you can't lie to me. Yeah. Like, like, at least tell me the truth straight yeah. up so we can do this together. But, like, don't lie to me, too. So that shit flipped my entire career. And that's when we started coming. And now I know. Just, like, keep everything transparent. <laughs> and I'm not, like, doing illegal, like, <laughs> email threads anymore. Do some covert CIA. Yeah, yeah. I okay. you clients, like, fucking dark ops. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. So next, talk about this boss you had where, like, was like kind of terrifying, but you actually learned a lot from them. Um, this was at the very start of my career. I worked for a production company, a video production company in DC. And I had a boss who was like 65 years old and she could like chew up bullets and spit them out. She was just so bad ass. And she was so scary. Like being at that, working at that job was just like horrifying every single day. Um, you would just randomly get yelled at. I remember one time we were on a shoot and she needed an extra for the video scene. And she was like, Yura, can you jump in there and be an extra? And I was like, sure. And she's like, oh, but you need a name for the for the for the scene because this guy's gonna say your name and she's like what should your name be I was like i don't know she's like what about chun li and i was like what the fuck i was like wait are you fucking serious did she just say chun li did she literally just say chun li Oh, shit. I know. And like, I remember being so young. I think I was like 24 and I didn't know how to act. I just was like, uh, I mean, I guess, like, yeah, we can go for Chun Li if you want. Um, but I guess that's just like, that's what came with working with like a boomer mm -hmm. or like, that's not even a boomer. At the age of 65, what, what was she like a Gen X? No, she's a boomer. She's a boomer? God damn. It was like, that was so racist and I didn't even yeah. fucking know it at that time. But like to her, it was just like, you know, I think she still called like she called the Vietnamese people. I forget what she called them. There was like a term that she used. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like waiting for you to say it, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know the term. Yeah. Uh, um, was it gook? Yeah. Gook, yeah. Yeah. She would use gook and I'd yeah. be like, bro, like, what yeah. the fuck? You can't say that yeah. shit around me. Oh man, but like you can't do anything because it's just like your boss. Fucking insane. But she taught me so much. I'm not gonna lie. Like that fear that she instilled in me when I worked there also pushed me to work really hard yeah. and produce really good work. And so that's a struggle that um my business partner and I have today is that when we are like telling people what to do. I tend to fall into like that fear category and I like try to lead with fear because that's how it was a say. Okay. 
You want to say, oh, I'll cut your hand off. Yes, literally, I'm like, if you if you set the standard high, they will meet it. Yeah. But if you set the standard low, they will also meet oh, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that. And she is more like, no, because like you don't want to like have bad blood with your team and you don't want to um you don't want your employees uh to resent you. Yeah. I'm like, fuck resentment. They need to get the fucking work done. So like we're always fighting about like leadership style and it's just how I, I was like led in the past. Yeah. So do y'all have any people actually working for you? We have some contractors. We have like two contractors, but we had more people working for us in the past. But geez, these like last six months have been like insanely slow, insanely slow. So what lessons have you learned from these peers of bosses that you, you're utilizing now to be the best boss you can be? best boss I can be. What did I learn? I think honestly, it's just about like, uh, being fearless. Like as long as even, even when I am like scared to death about like, Oh shit, are, is our business about to go down? Like, are we, we just lost like two clients. Like what the fuck are we going to do? But like, I just have to like be that fearless leader and like rally the troops and just like hype everyone up and be like, we fucking got this. We're fucking lit. We have all the sources. We have all the skills that we need. Like we got this. And then I'll like go to my room and cry about it. But like, they can't see that. I think that's really it. Just like fake it till you make it and they will follow. It was Chris for you. So I should be a big fan of uh, Snapchat, right? Mm -hmm. What happened to Snapchat, right? Like everyone should use it. You should be able to like in the past, if Snapchat was a Snapchat, I would like do a Snapchat for the podcast, all the kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they changed something I can't figure out no more. Like, like only only, only use that like, like with my cousin who's like eighteen years old, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what happened to Snapchat? Is it still? I, I, I used, you look at like there's still hundreds of millions of users every day, but it's like more AR VR now. It's like what has Snapchat evolved to? Snapchat didn't they get? Uh, I believe they got bought out by someone, didn't they? I don't think so. No, are they still the same owners? Evan Williams still owns it, yeah. Oh, I honestly, I don't know what happens to I mean, Snapchat. Does, does anyone use it anymore? Like, does any of your customers say, put me on Snapchat or no, anything? No, never. And I think Snapchat really is more of like a, uh, like it's super a personal app. Like businesses don't really need to yeah. be on there. Like more AR, VR, yeah. like and stuff. Yeah, like you're not, um, you're not making money. You can make money off of TikTok. You can make money off of Instagram, YouTube, but you can't make money off of Snapchat. So I guess that's it. It's like if you're not able to make money off of an app for yeah. business owners or for any creators, influencers, yeah. then what's the point of being on it? And of course, when uh, Mark Zuckerberg copied everything off Snapchat for Instagram, they probably killed a little bit too. I mean, honestly, yeah, Instagram is just like just trying to Instagram is literally like that. <laughs> to me, this is how I view Instagram. Instagram was like the popular kid back in the day, but like maybe they got held back like three grades. So they're now they're kind of like that weird loser yeah. old kid, but they're still like kind of cool. Yeah. So they like can stay in the mix, but like they are fighting to stay in the mix. So it looks like they're like they're like the. 19 year old sophomore in high school. <laughs> they're just like fighting to they, stay they, with they, they can drive around and stuff like a car, you know. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, is it going to drive you around to the mall and stuff? And you know that they're cool, but like, really at the end of the day, like, he's a little creepy. Yeah, he's a little creepy. Like, he only cares about like aesthetics, but like, yeah. these days, like, everyone's into TikTok because it's like raw and like, that's what people are into. I don't know. I, I, to me, TikTok became what Snapchat could have became. Mm. But Snapchat doesn't, uh, don't the videos still, uh, they. It's for 60 seconds. Yeah. I think they, I think they do. I think there's a way to get out of it though. Mm. That's been a long time. So. Okay. One thing I do like about Snapchat, the fact that the Snapchat map, so you're like, you know, you can track people on there, you know. Oh, you know. cool. well, I think, um, now more and more people are using find my friends. Do you, are, do you have anyone on find my friends? I don't think I do. Okay, so that's a, a new thing too. Well, not a new thing, but it's just like you have all your friends and people you know on Find My Friends and it feels like you're like, just like God, mm -hmm. just like watching them, as they, <laughs> watching them as they go. You're like, mm, like, what are you, like, you'll like text someone and be like, what are you getting at Popeye's? And yeah. they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, how do you know? Yeah. 
I got to get on there. Um, so let's talk about TikTok, right? I'm a big fan of TikTok. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot of people say oh, the TikTok's trash, you know, but you think about all social media platforms are trash to extent, right? Mm -hmm. I think like on, on TikTok, I follow this one lady. Uh, she has like daily self tip from there. Another guy I follow, he, he is like 80 years old. He does a psychiatry tip every day, you know. I can't know him. Is he the one that does he does he do like in English and Spanish? Does like a salsa dance? Oh, never mind. No. Yeah. Yeah. He does like a salsa dance while he's doing it. Yeah. What? Yeah. He does like a, he does like one in English and one in, in Spanish. And he does a salsa dance while giving you like a psychology tip. Yep. Yeah. This is what I love about TikTok. Yeah. Honestly, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, there's much good stuff on there, you know. I just have this question for you. You might know the answer. Like, I know before that you go on TikTok, you get like thousands of views, right? Now it's like everyone's only getting like 200, 200 views. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's a shadow ban by TikTok and everybody, or they're trying to slow it down or any idea. So how do you surpass that? Yeah. Or is that because everyone I know on there is getting 200 views. Like there's TikTok videos. How to get past 200 of you, like, you know, one person, like, I used to get, as a matter of fact, the lady, uh, the salesperson, like, Leslie, she, could, she used to get, like, millions of views. Mm -hmm. She has, like, maybe 300, 400, right? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like that, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone I know on there is, like, down to two, 300 of views. Mm -hmm. TikTok, and I'm not even, like, I'm going to give you the, like, the disclaimer that I'm definitely not an expert on TikTok. TikTok is freaking rough. It is just a battlefield. You have no idea how to get viral or how to, uh, you can't control your results like you can on Instagram. And, but the thing is also you can't control, uh, you can't control your results, but you can also get viral much quicker than you can on Instagram. So it's like a gamble. And honestly, what I've found on TikTok is that once you do go viral, like that person that you're talking about, like they used to have millions of views and now they only have two, 300, is that some of these people aren't prepared for the virality. So they will, one of their videos will completely pop off and then they don't know how to upkeep those, that engagement. And so they, they need to come up with like a strategy to like keep this, these people engaged. Um, what I found for like viral videos is just based off what I've done for my clients is that the shorter, the better, obviously. And there needs to be something really, this sounds so basic. This sounds so vague, but like really interesting about it. Like it can't be like some everyday normal thing. It has to be something that is super niche and that people aren't used to seeing every day. So like one, one video that went super viral for one of my clients was a, it was such a simple video. It was literally a drone, drone shot of a tractor on a hemp field, cutting down the hemp for harvest. And it was just a beautiful fucking shot that people aren't used to seeing. And what we did was we put some like gangster rap music <laughs> on top of it. And it was like seven seconds long. And you see the farmer on this tractor, just like mowing these hemp fields for seven seconds. And it just blew up. And then another video was um, Korean culture. And it basically was, this is hilarious. It was my dad drinking American-made soju and giving his honest reaction on it. And it was like 20 seconds long. But like the reason we think it went viral is because it was like so niched and it was like so catered towards like Korean-American people that they felt like related to this guy. They like felt relatability to a Korean-American dad. So... What were you tell? We were talking about this a little earlier. What a lot of people like, you know, I don't want to post. I don't want to post. You know, I'm scared or whatever. And you just said you just post, right? Just post. But how do you get people to overcome that initial fear, right? Hmm. Like, oh, it's not good enough. It's not this. My makeup's not right. You know, mm -hmm. the angle's wrong. My voice sounds funny. Like it's easy to say just post. You know, but a lot of people have a difficult. Like even now, like a lot of people, like me, I, I do social media. Even now, I have a hard time like getting on the camera talking. Right? Mm -hmm. I do it, but it's like. You know, always have excuse not to do it right. So if I'm having a problem, 
what what I've actually someone who's never done before. This is like something that my business partner always asked me too, because like I feel like uh, she is more like concerned also about like oh I don't want to post that like it looks weird I sound funny blah blah blah, and I don't know it's it's hard for me to tell someone to just post it because I know that it really depends on their confidence level. And I think sometimes what helps is to remember that like you are the expert in whatever you do and remember that, that you have the skill and the knowledge and that you are the expert in this podcast. I mean, this is the Jason Cavendish show. Like you are only the only person to like just post it. And remember that like, I don't know, go back to the shroom thought. Like, nothing really matters. Nothing really matters. Exactly. Is there a business that should not be on social media? Not, I mean, not, take away like illegal business, of course, but is there a business out there that should not be on like plumbers or maintenance workers or restaurants or certain, or certain every business have kind of some type of social media presence? Mm, I think every business should have some sort of social media presence, honestly, because these days it's becoming like if they find your business, on on Google or whatever, and then what's the next thing they're gonna do? They're gonna look you up on social media to see if you're legit. So that's the thing. It's like if they can go to your social media, see that you're legit, and that gives them just like an extra boost of trust in you, then that's gonna push them to book you or like get your service. Yeah. What's it called? Like a not brand recognition, but a proof of concept, something like that. You know? Yeah. That's like you know, like if like like to me, like if you look for a job. But you're not on LinkedIn. Like, what are you doing, right? Yeah. Like, no one's gonna hire you not on LinkedIn, right? Exactly. Or maybe they will, but it's, it's gonna be highly unlikely. Yeah, it's annoying because we have to like upkeep all these different platforms. But at the same time, it's like you have to. It's just the way that business is these days. Yeah. So, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs out there? Advice. I feel like that's like a loaded question. Like, there's like so so many different advice pieces I could give. Okay, how about someone has an idea, they want to start a business, they have no idea what to do. They have no idea what to do. Yeah, they have an idea, like they want to start a lawn, lawn mowing company, right? Mm-hmm. But like... They don't know where to start. Yeah. I would say if you have an idea, you're an entrepreneur, don't know where to start, I would go to... There are so many local, uh, local run government services like SCORE, like small business services that you can get for free, that you can get consulting from other small business owners. You don't have to pay a cent. And these are like volunteer work based. So getting advice from that, because honestly, I feel like if you don't know what to do, you need a mentor. You either need a mentor or like a business partner. So like you can't do it by yourself. You need to like find another person to help you. So go on that search to find someone to like help you get through this thing. Yeah, I'll, I guess a good point I would add too. Like if you're early in your entrepreneur career and someone's trying to make you pay for something, that's a fucking red flag. Yeah. That's the red flag. And yeah. if you're starting off, you have no revenue. Someone says, I'm going to charge you $500 to be a coach to do something. Yeah, that kind of way. Yeah, honestly. And like, yeah, like totally, I don't want to hate on business coaches because they do work. But I think like if you're just starting out and they know that you're completely naive to the whole industry, then like they might try and take advantage of you. Not all, but like a majority will. So it's like just go for those free things because you just need to get the, like your feet started. You just need to like start running. So talk about the concept of being broke but having freedom. Whoa. <laughs> Being broke, but having freedom. Okay. So this pulls me back to a story of when I was in New York and I was at a picnic and uh, the people at this picnic were a little older than me. I think I was like 25 at the time and they were probably like 30. And one of the girls said to me that um, I would, I hate my job. I absolutely hate my job, but I make good money and I dread every eight every hour of that job but everything that I make for that job I spend it on my hobbies and so that's why I fucking work and I was like that is so lame like I would much rather 
go for a job where I'm passionate about, even if I'm not making that much money. And as I got older, like even now, I still kind of understand where she's coming from because like having stability, having like a dedicated paycheck every two weeks is like mind blowing. It's like, oh my God, there's like so much like stability and freedom in that. But you can't do whatever you want. You have to take a shroom trip to realize that you need to go visit your grandpa in Korea when that shouldn't be the case. Like you should be able to go visit your grandpa or your dying whatever sibling whenever you want. Dying sibling. Oh, my God. That's so sad. Um, So. Like currently in my stage in life, I'm 30 years old and I have the least amount in my savings as I ever had in my entire life. I feel like when I was like 26, I was like filthy rich compared to now because I was working at nine to five. But thinking back to that time, I was like so depressed and I felt like I couldn't do anything in my life. Like I always had to get things approved. Now that I'm 30, I have less in my savings. I got to be more like more uh, aware of like what I'm spending money on. But I can do whatever the hell I want. And honestly, I would much rather be broke, do whatever the hell I want, than be rich and be like tied down to like someone telling me what to do. I'm like just even saying that I'm like, am I like on the road to homelessness? (laughs) (laughs) Like be broke, but like do whatever you want. Like I'm like literally that's homelessness right there. (laughs) That's hilarious. Nah, you'll be good. Um. Tell me about the social media audit that your company does. Oh. So it's just like, you know, like when you hire a tax person, they audit like all your like money, bank account, whatever you need and like give you a plan. That's the same thing we do for like social media. So we like go into your accounts. We like check your profiles, see if like really your account is like set up for success because people don't really set up their accounts like the most efficient way they just like do whatever they want and there are actual best practices to set up your profile so that's what we do usually for every beginning stage of every client we hire is like we go into your accounts and we make sure everything is set right and like how do you do learn all this stuff like there's a class you took somewhere like there's like some kind of like a social media class you can take on youtube you learn this stuff you just like trial and error like how do you learn all this stuff Well, I think just being a millennial is like growing up with social media is that we just like it's in our blood almost. That sounds so weird, but it is. And we've taken a lot of courses with like other um, highly skilled social media managers, social media manager world, social media agency world is like huge, but also so small that like the superstars, the really, really successful people in this industry are like very well known and so they will hold classes or like workshops and we'll take those workshops and classes to just like better our understanding of the algorithm because that's the annoying thing is that algorithm is always changing and we always have to like keep up to date with it to me one of the worst things is when someone says like i'm a social media manager I only work with instagram only work with tiktok right like no you're an instagram manager yeah you're not social media you're an instagram manager that's always like frustrates me when people do that. You have to do all. You do have to do all. But um, a lot of people come to us with like, they want like YouTube help or like things like that. And like, for some reason, I don't really classify YouTube as like social media. YouTube is like a video service product provider. Those, that's like long form video content. We do like strictly Instagram and TikTok. And honestly, people also ask for like Facebook marketing help, which I feel like is like, so like 19, like yeah, yeah, it is. It's just like, I don't I mean, know. I guess you're trying to like market like baby boomers. Yes. Yeah. Like if you're selling like, like nursing home, whatever you yeah. call like eyeglasses. Exactly. If you're selling like Ray-Bans or like medical machines, maybe, but like, you know, Instagram and TikTok is really the way to go. Yeah. Um. So when a customer comes to you, like well, back to the audit, right? Mm-hmm. You audit someone like, what's the approach you like? Are you like, man? Jason, like, this shit fucking sucks. This is horrible, right? Or you, like, kind of have, like, more like a hand-holding method. Like, you're doing this wrong. Like, how do you, like, do that? How do you balance, like, what's wrong with like, being, like, a total asshole? So. 
yeah, we're totally not total assholes, which I try not to be because me the worst thing someone comes to you like you're doing this wrong, wrong and your mind like I don't, I don't I'm not doing wrong, but I spent a lot of hard work doing this. Oh, I, I didn't know it was wrong, but I, you know, I did a lot of hard work, right? If you someone because oh, it's all fucked up, right? Oh, come on now, like of course that's be different. I think. Yeah, that's where my business car- partner comes in. Uh-huh. That's her forte. She, yeah, that she's more like your profile looks great. You did the best you can. I like how you did this, and I like how you did this. But you know, here's a few things that we think could improve your but profile. Delete these thousand videos. Yeah. Yeah. Delete these thousand yeah. videos right now. Yeah, maybe we'll just go ahead and get rid of your entire bio and like recreate it. Huh. So like, she's very good at that, and that's like what I value in her is that like she can lay it down with like mm-hmm. the sugar on top because people are very sensitive about like the hard work yeah. that they put in, which they should be. And I feel like I'm more like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> come up to us with this shit like no wonder you need help so let's suppose someone's out there doing all, all the stuff themselves right they're like man you know what i just got funding got some more customers i can afford to pay someone right now right mm-hmm. how should they go about deciding the best agency to pick honestly there are so many social media managers and agencies out there that you could choose from um and i know it's very time consuming and frustrating to find the best one for you um, I would say to go on TikTok or Instagram and look up social media managers and just kind of like browse through because unless you're a brick and mortar, you can, you can use any social media manager across the nation. I would go for people in the U S though. Don't go for people in the Philippines or like internationally, because they also are using different, um, they're in different uh, countries. So their posts will be spread to that country specifically, unless they're on a, what's, what's that thing called? A, a um, when they like block your, uh, your uh, location. Higher, uh, VPN. Yeah. VPN. If they're using a VPN, then like you could use them, but go for a U.S. person. Um and I would use sites like ilovecreatives.com. That's a really good site to find like high quality uh, social media managers and agencies. And you kind of got to like do your shopping and just like actually talk to them, like set up in, uh, intro calls with these agencies or social media managers and see if you like their vibe. Because that's really it. Because when you hire someone to represent your brand on social media, they have to understand your brand. And so they have to be kind of similar to you. They have to like think how you think. And that kind of can't be taught. Yeah. You know, you just have to like click with this person. Now, when you hire a social media agency, should you give them like everything, like, you know, access to your personal LinkedIn, personal accounts, or just company accounts? Um, they don't need access to your personals unless um, you're using your personals as business uh, ventures. But Really, just like all your business logins, they should definitely have that. Okay. When you hire a social media manager, like how long should you expect the results? Like, I know if you hire an SEO person, they say six months, right? Mm. I think it was about like six months. So I'm paid for six months, and six months later, you have no results. Uh huh. Like, so is it the same with social media? You got to wait a certain time period for results, or is that what SEO people say? They usually say six, six months. months? Yeah. Mm. Six months or longer, yeah. Wow. Um, social media people, we always tell them like, there's no guaranteed amount of months, but honestly, like after the third month, you should be seeing results. If you're not seeing results after the third month, then like you should probably have a chat with them about changing the strategy or like reconsider a different manager. So, has this ever happened to you? Like you bring on a client, right? Tell them everything you do. They do it. But like, it's like, for whatever reason, this is like a social media right there. Mm-hmm. The voice sounds bad. The context horrible. You know they're doing the best, they're fun to but for some reason, this just ain't happening, right? It's mm-hmm. no one's fault. It's like they're not paradigmatic, they're like just like boring, dry. What they say be, it's not working right. Mm-hmm. You like, how do you work through that? You like tell them, hey, maybe you shouldn't be the spokesperson for your company. Let's bring in someone else. Like, mm-hmm. how does that work? Um, yeah, we will always tell them the truth and be like, it's not working out, like the views aren't working. Uh, we should come up with a different strategy or a different approach to this. And most of the time. Uh, people are okay with like me or my business partner also like using our voices or faces for their brands. Um, and I have no problem doing that. So 
as long as uh they're okay with that then like that's something that we also provide then how about those those companies like buffer uh hootsuite smarty like the, the social media schedules and places mm-hmm. what do you think about that i don't know if some people say don't use it because your views will go down drastically other mm-hmm. people are maybe so but you know it's time saver like yeah I think if you're using a third party app to help your social media uh, posting schedule because you have no time and it's the only way that you can get anything out, then like, yeah, go ahead, do it if it works for you. But know that uh, social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok don't like these platforms, these third party platforms. So they know when you're using them. And they would rather you as a person be on the app on your phone. So if you have the time, I would much rather do it manually than use these third party places. And what's your take on like putting links in social media posts? Like you know, on LinkedIn, Twitter, like putting like posts. Like, post, like, post, like when I post this podcast, I might put a link like back to your, like your website, right? Mm-hmm. I know like a lot of LinkedIn people will say, I mean, a lot of non-LinkedIn people say don't do it. But I'm actually like a LinkedIn creator and mm-hmm. doing like a LinkedIn creator class. The people LinkedIn said, no, put the links in there. We want it right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, you work at XBC and put it in there. All these so-called experts say not put it in there right. Mm-hmm. So what's your take? My take is that tag and link everything that you can. Because that's almost, honestly, it's like SEO. Mm-hmm. It's like the more people that you can get involved in this post, the more eyes you can get in exactly. on it. So tag as many people that are involved tag as many websites, links, like put as much information in there as possible because it will just like the uh, the platform will just push it out to those audiences as well. Okay. And then, um, so for the, for the social media part, right? Is there a key to going viral? Mm. It was just a, Is there like a chance. golden rule or yeah. something? No, there's like, there's some factors that can help, like the shorter, the better. Um, Make sure that the music, the audio is trending. Um, Do you ever see that, you know, you know, you know, Battle Porches, right? Yeah. There was a video that she went viral on. The one. um, Bobbing her head and stuff. Yes. Yeah. From a long time. It was like a few years ago. Millions and millions of views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now she's like fucking like. Pressing it, so to speak, right? She's like famous now. Yeah, it's so happen. weird. It's strange to me, though. Like that type of stuff, for some reason, is almost like sometimes it feels like these people. This sounds like very weird, but it seems like these people were like honestly chosen. Like mm-hmm. they actually, it didn't happen to yeah. them organically, but yeah. like they were chosen, yeah. and this happened to them like like it was a plan. Yeah. Because like I don't know. Sometimes I even look at her, and I'm just like. She just looks like an AI to me for some reason. Like she doesn't look actually real. She's yeah, yeah, like a real person. Be, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like some kind of Filipino uh, AI world. Like, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like she's gorgeous, but it's just yeah. like, I don't know. Something is weird about it. Yeah. Yeah. Influencers are, um, influencers hold so much power on social media it's honestly insane they can like ruin a business mm-hmm. it, one influencer can ruin yep. your business it's pretty scary it is it is so are you, you have clients all over the united states yeah and so what's your like your target like, i guess your perfect customer like a base of revenue some type of business like how do you decide who to take on uh we actually recently we'll say no to people even i think, I think that's important yeah Even if we're like not doing well and we need the money, we'll still say no. We said no to someone recently from New York because uh, just the whole process of how they reached out to us and they wanted a proposal from us in like two days and they wanted it over Thanksgiving weekend because they had a proposal to make by Wednesday. Yeah. And like we got on a call with them quickly and just like immediately I could tell that they like seemed like a micromanager. And this is how they talked. Literally, this is them. So I can't tell you the brand of the person that you are proposing to because I can't disclose that information yet. But the brand is like elevated, but mysterious. Accessible, but not accessible. And it was just didn't make sense. Like she was just contradicting herself the whole time. And she also wouldn't tell us the brand that we were proposing to. That would be helpful, right? For your yes, brand. Exactly. So it's like, what the fuck is she talking about? And so 
I talked to my business partner about, I was like, yeah, no, like it, it already sounds like a fucking mess. Like just, just no. So how does it work? You and your business partner come here in Seattle. Mm-hmm. You have a client with saying like Omaha, Nebraska. How does that work? Mm. Um, well, we, we usually do things over Zoom. So like we have like meetings, monthly meetings, and we go through a strategy, analytics, content planning, all that stuff. Um, but in terms of like content creation, uh, usually the client is able to provide us uh, footage that they take on okay. their own, which will direct them on. If not, if it's like a certain product, like if you sell um, headphones, you'll send us the headphones and then we'll create all the content ourselves. What's been like the most, the most funnest product you that you have got with? Um, the most fun product is honestly the soju company. Okay. And it's, I'm biased because I'm Korean and like, I love soju. And this was like a high quality American made soju. They did barrel aged soju. And I had so much fun doing this because the viral videos that w- popped off for them were all videos of my uncles, my actual Korean <laughs> uncles taste testing the soju. And they would like, I would always tell them like, don't hold back on your reaction. And they, you know, Korean uncles are very like, they don't say anything, but they just do all expressions. So they would like take a shot of soju and they'd be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they wouldn't say anything. And that was it. That was the fucking video. And like that shit would get like 2 million views just because people are like, yo, that fucking, I want to hang out with your uncle. So that's like, and I was like, yeah, that's my uncle. Like it was the funnest shit ever. Cause it was just like real content. We didn't have to like make up concepts for her, like make up like bullshit, like stupid ideas. Like it was just real uncle footage. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who are your mentors? My mentors, honestly, I don't have a mentor at this moment. And I kind of feel like I would like one because I'm feeling like there's a lot that I want to do to take my business to the next level. And I just need a little bit of like pushing. But I've had mentors in the past that have really kicked my ass. And so I'm kind of, you know what? I'm glad that you brought that up because I think that's something that I would really want at this moment. All right. Next part and probably to me the most important part. Who are you mentoring? Who am I mentoring? Shit. I don't know. My clients? I don't know. I guess like consulting them all the time is mentoring, but I'm not mentoring a single person. Yeah. I realized today, actually today, that uh, I have a hard time, like, listening to people. And so I think that, like, so you mentoring So you have a hard time listening to people, or you have a hard time listening to people you know are full of shit? Mm. Those are the difference. That's it. Yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah, I have a hard time listening to people who I feel like I can't connect with. Cause I will just immediately pull back. And so, yeah, I haven't had the chance to mentor anyone. I don't really care to, I feel, do you feel like you, are you mentoring someone? I mentor some people. Yeah. yeah? You like it? Yeah. I mean, it's always feels good back to be like wanted, you know, and people reach out to you for your advice and experience, mm-hmm. right, you know, mm-hmm. it's like a ego thing kind of sort of, you know, Yeah. like, oh shit, you want help from me? Like, like an ego boost yeah. too. Are you sure for me? Like I'm just a little nobody, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aren't we all little nobodies? Yeah. And she takes from us. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then we're then not then everyone's a nobody, and nothing is nothing. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um. So how do you how do you like what's your business model? Like how do you make money? Business model is getting people to sign a retainer contract with us. And basically we bill them every single month to manage their social so media like accounts. So like a lower retainer? Yeah. Like that, okay. Yep. We're putting hours towards your account every single month and you're paying for that. And honestly with social media too, it's like once it stops, your social media dies. So you kind of have to like keep it going and you kind of have to like pay people to keep it going. Is there like a, Time of the year where you get more business, or is it pretty even? 
At the new year. New year, okay. Yeah, so right now, like, inquiries are going up because people are starting to think about, like, oh, shit, 2024, I want my marketing to be on point, and so I need to get a social media person. Summer sucks. And, yeah, summer sucks because no one's on social media. Everyone's just, like, out doing their thing. Do you, like, partner with any other social media companies? Oh, uh, yeah. We have, like, we make friends with social media agencies, like, just to like pass each other uh, clients. Cause sometimes we're like, eh, we don't like this uh, new inquiry. Why don't you take them? Okay. Um, what's, what's your favorite thing about social media? My favorite thing about social media is, so I am a video producer by trade. And so what I love about what I do is like creating videos where I can like, portray a story or portray a scene or like a message and fit it with a certain piece of music. That is honestly my favorite thing. When the music matches the scene and the message is clear, it's just like, it's like creating like a Bach piece to me. It's just like, it's fun. It's expressive. I love it. So what's the max amount of customers y'all can handle? Um, the max amount of customers we can handle is usually like, like 10. 10, okay. All right. Yeah. And like, what do you do? Like, you know, suppose you have those 10 customers, right? I'm assuming like, we'll say like six of them, like, you know, like go the flow, do what you say. Post two of them, like really fucking needy, right? They're calling every day, like, you know, like being a PNS every day. Like, how do you work through that? Like, you like kind of educate them, like, hey, you know, you're wasting time calling me every day. Let me do my job. Or you're like, Vince, like, hey, they say working out, I got to fire their client. Yeah, uh, we'll just cut it. Like, that's, I can't do that. If a client is, like, super needy, like, I will try and take it. Because sometimes I know at the beginning they can be needy. Um, and I will hold their hand through it. But, like, after the first three months, if it doesn't stop, then this is not why I own my own business. I'm not trying to be, like, slave to you again. So I will just, like, cut it. And for your price and model, like, how do you figure out your price? Like, I, mean, I guess y'all went through different, different pricing models that you got the one you are right now. Like, how do you talk about the trial and error? I think a lot of entrepreneurs, like, they, I think the rule says, like, whatever you say you should charge, you should charge double that because you're undervaluing yourself. Mm. Like, how do you figure out what the amount to get, you take care of yourself with the value you need and also be kind of reasonable to the customer? Well, luckily, because I've had experience in agencies in the past, I know like the kind of like uh, the set amount agencies will, uh, the rate that people will give for social media management. And we started pretty low. So we started at like 45 an hour and we basically do like 30, like a range between 30 to 50 hours a month. Um, over the past three years, that has doubled. So now we're at like almost like $75, $80 an hour. And we have an estimated amount of hours that we put in each month. And then that's our fixed rate. Okay. And you have a potential customer and they push back and say, this is too much, can't afford it. You're like, you're like kind of educate them a little bit. Or do you say, okay, like, you know, we're not like, um, we're not that low tier of, of production company, right? Mm -hmm. There are some people to go to. When people come to us and they like haggle about the money, then we usually think like, okay, this person is not, uh, they're not willing to invest. And so at that point, if you're not willing to invest and you're probably also not willing to collaborate when we actually work together. And so that's like already a red flag for us. Um, we're really picky about taking clients. Even if we're doing slow, we're picky because we feel like the the mental health is like, or like the the worth of our skill is like way more than just like taking And these client. retainers are like month by month, year retainer, six months. Like how's that work? We start off with three. Okay. Because it's like, we know that like social media investment is like, it's weird to invest in someone doing your social media it's like such a weird thing so we know that that's like a risk so we start at three and then usually in three months you see results and then you're like okay let's then continue you, then you yeah and then we're like okay then we do month to month actually because we we don't like um 
keeping people in like a year long contract because we understand like shit ebbs and flows. So it's month to month. And usually like our average um, like lifetime contract with someone is about like a year and a half to two years. Okay. And then obviously you're not like open to people like 24 seven, right? But let's suppose like you have a pretty good client. They've been with you for like a couple of years and they have a big social media campaign come on Instagram, right? And it's like, but then like they know it's like Saturday at 10 o'clock at night, somehow the account got deleted, right? Something really bad happened. Like, can I contact you then? Have to wait till Monday? How's that work? No, if, if something really, really bad happens and like they have our information, we're like, even though like if you send us an email on like a Saturday, like, and it's like some regular ass email, I respond to you on Monday. Yeah. But if it's like something big, like I check my emails often and I will like, oh my God, it. I can't find my email. My Instagram is deleted. Like, yeah. I, I used to have 10,000 followers and I'm down on one follower. <laughs> Be like, what the fuck happened? Cause I, that's on us too. Cause it's like, what the hell? Um, how do you feel about mixing friends with business? I'm, I'm good with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course you can't do it with everyone, you know, like people like, I, like I say this out loud all the time. I spend what I can, like an HR, right? Mm -hmm. You need like great people to like build a company. I would come on most people suck, right? Yeah. Most people suck, right? I mean, it just depends on the person, right? I mean, some people can do it, some people can't. But but a lot suck. Yeah. yeah, like have you ever been burned by like a friend that you like did business with? Yeah. How'd you go about that? Uh the pity of part of me just wanted to storm like the run into the mud, but like man, what's what's the point of it, right? Yeah. But pity me party is gonna get back in one day. I, I... Are you still friends with them? Oh fuck it. Yeah. Oof, that, that recently happened to me. And I, it's just the disrespect. Yeah, they're, they're done, yeah. The disrespect yeah. on not even like my name or our friendship, but the disrespect on my work, yeah. my livelihood, yeah. what I poured my my effort yeah. into. Like, don't do what I say because I'm, I'm kind of petty, right? But I, yeah. fuck, that, fuck that guy, fuck that girl. Me too. Yeah. No, honestly. Fuck them. Yeah. Honestly, some people, and I don't know if this is the same with the people that you you dealt with, but like some people really think that they're gods out yeah. there. The that, world revolves around them, you know. That they're so entitled yeah. and that they they can do whatever the hell they want. But they've never really done nothing to own. They've never accomplished anything, but you know. This just recently happened to me like a month ago. Yeah. And I just like cannot believe people are so. And if you, someone talks about that, they're like, oh, no, that wasn't me. That's that's not my fault. That's not nothing. No, oh, no. no. And these people are just like, go. How can they sleep at night? How can they go about their days? You know what? They sleep very good at night. That's how, that's a, how, that's how they are, you know? That's the, the personality, you know? I just can't. Do you believe in karma or what? Yes, I do. I hope, I hope karma is true. Yeah, because I'm not going to do anything about it. But, like, I think karma will take care of it. Jesus Christ. Some people are just, like... Yeah, a lot of fucked up people out there. What can we do? Just keep having fun, right? Yep. Just realize none of this shit fucking matters. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I know. That should be, like, the title of this podcast. Like, yeah. nothing fucking matters. Nothing fucking matters. Nothing matters. No. Um, so, um... You already talked about your business some, but go into more detail to how it got started. Actually, that's a three-part question. I'll go to the first part, right? Okay. Talk about how you got started. I started because I lost that job. After I lost the job, my best friend, Allison, uh, she was trying to start a company and she asked me to help her. And I was just like, yeah, I'll help you while I look for another job. And she told me that she manifested me actually going in 50 50 on this business with her she was like hoping for it she was like praying about it manifesting it and I, the more and more that i helped her on this business the more and more i was like you know what this could be something let's fucking go in on this so that's how we started and how long did you know allison before y'all started the business oh me and allison knew each other for like we've known each other since like seventh grade okay yeah so how old is some how old are seventh graders? 12, 13. Okay. So we've known each other for like 20 years. Okay. Almost 20 years. That's a plus. Yeah. So it was like some random person you met at the bar. No, no, no. Oh my God. No, <laughs> fuck no. Me and her know each other yeah. like you know taking vodka shots in the city ball. Yeah. I mean, we still do do that for sure. Oh my God. That's that's also also the scary thing is that like me and her have so much fun when we're together. 
it's like anything, any like little inconvenience of our job, like when we are together, we'll be like, just, let's just go get a grab. Let's just go grab some wine. So how do you two, um, everyone has disagreements, right? How do you two deal with disagreements in the business? Um, We will definitely have tips here and there. And what we do is take a second. And then usually one of us will call the other and just like, be completely transparent be like hey i feel this certain way about this and i'm so sorry if i hurt you about this and we'll just talk it out because we're grown-ass adults yeah. and we're both like we're both very um we always say that we value our friendship more than our business so we would rather lose our business than lose our friendship and what what's what your focus on now as far as the business what's your focus right now education yeah, we want to start getting into more like, like educating clients or no, like uh, creating your, classes for your own stuff. Okay. Yeah, like creating online classes, doing more workshops, getting paid to like educate people on like social media and also like how to start a business. Okay. And what's the future vision for the company? Future vision. We talked about this when we first started our business is uh, in like 10 years we would love to have like a team of people, maybe like 10 to 15 people. We're still directing everything. Like all the creative visions go through us. All the strategies go through us. But like, we're not doing the nitty gritty. We're not doing the day to day anymore. And we're able to do a lot of education for people because that's really what we want to do. And also we want fucking property. We want to buy property, rent that shit out and like have like other streams of income. So, so, you, so you see us something coming like something like a Gary Vayner Media in the future? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, suppose there's someone out there, man, like I, I'm really good at social media. I want to be a social media manager in college or other sister careers. What advice you have someone who wants to become like a, be more like a, have social media for a career? Uh, I would say is make sure your writing is on point. And also just because you're good at social media doesn't mean that you'll be good at social media for other clients. Make sure that you have like marketing experience. You don't have to go to school for this shit, but like get some classes in works, work for some other companies. Cause I think by working for other companies as internally, like internally will actually help you understand more about how to sell that company. So that's the main point is that you want to sell a company to be in social media. What are some things you see on all the social media accounts? Like you stole on Instagram, TikTok, and you see like you're like, this makes you cringe, right? Like, oh shit. What the all fuck the is time. this? Like what what some of the things that make you cringe? So many things make me cringe on social media. Um, I think the things that make me cringe the most are the influencers that are just like, so today we have the hair bear set and we're going to try it out. Like that shit pisses me the fuck off. Um, oh, shit, that's hilarious. But, you know, those girls make a hell of money, so I can't really hate. Yeah. So at least they're doing them. Sometimes I think I'm like, I have hella student, uh, student loans. And I'm like, should I like, I don't know, be, go on like, What's it called? What's that like streaming, the e-gaming streaming site? Twitch. Yeah. Should I like start a Twitch account and like play games with like a bra on? Have you ever gone to Twitch? And there's a thing, there's a, like, people know there's actually a lot of good podcasts on there. They also have a thing, a, a, a topic called Just Chatting, right? Mm -hmm. And talk about a dark rabbit hole, right? You go down there. I'll show you after we get off here. Like, there'll be like females, like no clothes on a hot tub, drinking <laughs> champagne, you know, like. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like some, like, like some, you know, person, lady walking through the park by herself, you know. Oh, I'm so scared, you know. Really? The big man, man, come get me, you know, right? Of course, off stage, right? You know, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's insanity, right? But they make money, right? Oh, yeah, they're going to mean something. That's what I'm saying. It's like, should I just, like, start something like that? Like, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, should I do an OnlyFans? And it's like, <laughs> I just like, can I pay these student loans off? Like, what am I going to do? Biden ain't doing shit. Yeah, student loans, that's another subject, right? Like, I know some people say, you know, like, get rid of them. I'm not a fan of that. My thing is, like, why or like, why do you have to pay interest rates, right? There should be no interest on, and if it is, maybe one or two percent. It should be like, like, like 18, 19 percent interest rate. It should be like zero or minimum interest rate, right? Yeah. 
because you guys want us to work, right? The government wants us to work. Yeah. The government wants us to go to fucking school. Yeah. So, like, what the hell? Yeah. And what, what's what's your degree in? Broadcast journalism. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I thought still, still kind of doing the same thing. Yeah, I'm still like speaking, but um, yeah, I thought I was gonna be a news reporter. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I started getting into news a little bit and was like, this is depressing. I do not want to like talk of like chase these like chase blood all yeah. the time. So I was, like all the bad no. stuff happening. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Nice. Um, so personally, what's your goals for yourself personally moving forward? Personally, I want to be, honestly, I just have one goal right now. Well, two. My first goal is I want to have fun. That's all I fucking care about. Seems like you're meaning that pretty good right now. Yeah. I just want to have fun. I think that, um, I always think about like when I'm in my deathbed, what, what, what am I going to be? What am I going to be worried about? What am I going to be happy about? And I know a lot of that is going to be the experiences that I had, the people that I've built relationships with and friendships with, the love that I have for them. And that's probably it, right? That's my legacy. Um, and I also, another goal is just like stability, financial stability. And I think that um, after... Leaving a relationship, like when you're in a relationship, obviously you have like double income, like you're good. You're like, even if you fall low, sometimes like, you know, your partner has you. So after that, I really had to like find my footing again, be like, shit, God damn, I got to pay for everything by myself now. Like I'm not buying a whole bag of apples anymore. I just need to buy two. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm like slowly getting back into like the groove of like having a stable amount of money in knowing like what I need and how much to spend. It's just like a whole thing. And your clients, like how many are in Seattle? Like where are your clients at right now? Like across the nation? I have a client in LA. I have a client in DC. They're all coastal. Mm -hmm. They're either in California, Seattle, or DC okay. because we're from Northern Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're talking about how you take your, take care of yourself already. Here's one for you. Like I'm making this up like, like tomorrow, let's suppose you have like a pride list of 20 things to do. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure you do things one to two versus 19 to 20? Mm. What does that mean? Like, you know, you know, if you have a pride list, you should probably do things one or two on the list first mm -hmm. versus something on 19 and 20. Like, how do you focus on what you really need to focus oh. on? Oh, right? mm. I am a still like a old fashioned when it comes to like writing stuff down. So like, I just like, I need to write it down, like literally on like a notepad and then like in order of, um, in order of importance. And also what helps me is like literally writing the time for it. Like do this specific task between like eight, and nine a.m. Do this at nine to 10. Okay. And that helps me crossing it out feels hella good. And the social media audit you do, like how long does that usually take? Is the day thing, week thing? Audits usually take me a few hours. Okay. So that's, that's like, fast though, right? yeah, that's pretty fast. Okay. Like once I just get into your social you profile pretty quickly. Oh yeah. I can tell. And then I'll just base it off of like what the, like I'll, I'll also like look into competitors too. Like how are your competitors doing their thing? Cause there's no like template perfect profile. Has this ever happened? You did a social media audit. You're like, man, you're all over, right? You really don't need us. Uh, yeah, that actually happened today. You did okay. Yeah, I did an audit the other day, and I was like, your profile is like really freaking good. And it was like, I feel bad charging you this because like, I didn't really do that much. Um, some people like have have it like a good eye for their profile already. Um, but. Whatever time that we didn't use on the audit, usually we'll be like, okay, like we could do some other stuff for you then. Okay. So let's suppose like you hit the lottery, right? The real lottery, right? And you and you were gonna start a social media company. What would you do with a social media company? Like, like not a something like a like suppose you you how would you start like a new LinkedIn, new TikTok, new Twitter? How would you do that? You mean if I hit the lottery? Yeah. 
and un unlimited resources. You hire anyone you want to, all the engineers you wanted to, hire anyone you want to. And you wanted to start like a new LinkedIn, new Instagram, some kind of new social media platform. Oh, and I wanted to start a new platform. What yeah. would I do? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. I think um, I would make it more. Ooh, okay. So it would be kind of like TikTok because I love TikTok. Um, but it would be focused on culture. So it would be focused on specific things around the world. Maybe something that has to do with like traveling, like getting to know the real point of view of like renting a car in Mexico, what, what the hell that looks like, or like going to Korea and ordering fried chicken, what the hell that looks like, like specific things that'll help people when they travel across the world. I think that would be kind of tight. Yeah. So another question for you. So you're Korean, your parents are from Korea. What's something you would say that, you know, you wish most Americans knew about Korea that they don't know? Something, um, something that I wish most Americans knew about Korea that they don't know already is that there is more to Korea than just K-pop. <laughs> I think obviously K-pop is huge. I mean, everyone knows BTS. What's that, yeah. what's that girl drink? Girl group? I think Blackpink. Black Pink. Black Pink. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like people are obsessed with K-pop. And that's awesome because like, yes, our culture is like super entertaining. Like we fucking got it on lock. Um, but I also feel like there's so much to Korea, like culturally and traditionally about the country that is so like, it's like the roots of Korea. Like this is the modern day shit. K-pop is modern day shit. But like, I think the more cool shit is like the cultural Korean dances and bands where like they are dressed out in the traditional Korean wear. And this guy has a hat on with like a drum in the middle of it. And then he has these like two strings with like balls at the end. And he's playing the drums on top of his head while dancing. So he's like dancing and he's like spinning around and like, it's just like, do, 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 do. And I think that shit is way more cooler than fucking Blackpink. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So um, is there anything else I asked you that I didn't know? Anything else you want to talk about? No. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so this is like a little question. Mm -hmm. Can you give us your social media link so people can reach out to you? Hell yeah. So I would say first follow me at, um, it's my personal. So it's at E-S-O-J-S-M. That's my personal. That's where you can find all my cool travel shit. And if you want to follow my business, that's at Kami.virtual. So at K-A-M-I dot virtual. So that's our Social media, Instagram, and then TikTok is also at commie.virtual. All right. So you give us a lot of great value so far, but can you give us like any last minute wisdom or advice on anything you want to talk about? Last minute wisdom of advice is have fun with your content. Whatever you feel like is true to you, post it. We don't always have to follow trends. Like, yes, we can follow trends to try and like stay a part of the game, but you can still do trends while staying true to what you're passionate about. And so don't forget that passion is like detectable. That's what's going to like set you apart from all the other lanes. Here, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jason. And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day. Hell yeah.